Welcome to Railway Legends, Myths, and Stories. I'm Kevin Stanley. In this episode, I will talk about getting a train or locomotive or any other piece of rail equipment to point in the direction you want it. There are locomotives and other rail equipment that don't look like they have any sort of, well, front or back. Some locomotives are known as center cabs. This type, for the most part, has just as good a visibility in either direction. American rail practice is to not confuse folks, so there is a letter F painted on what is considered the front of a locomotive, no matter what the vehicle looks like. Most modern multiple unit trains have cabs at both ends, so that if you want to run it the other way, you just walk to that end of the train. Another way is to have a locomotive at one end and then to have some kind of cab at the other. This is sometimes done with passenger cars with a cab at one end or the use of a specially built car that is used as a control car. Even though some of these cars are unpowered passenger cars with a control cab, in the USA the end with the cab is still marked with the letter F to show that it is considered the front. On the other hand, many locomotives are built with a distinct front, such as your typical steam engine. An ordinary steam locomotive clearly has a front and back. Of course, there are exceptions. Yes, I know one can operate a steam engine backwards, and of course this is the case with most equipment. There are, however, many steam locomotives that don't like running backwards for extended periods or at mainline speeds. So let's look at pointing the other way. There are four main ways to turn a locomotive or other rail equipment so that it points the other way. One method is to use a turntable. A turntable is a well-known way of turning a locomotive. First, you move the locomotive or some other type of equipment onto the turntable, then turn it. Some small turntables are simply pushed around manually, such as this one at the Nevada State Railroad Museum in Carson City. These are sometimes called Armstrong turntables, not because of the name of a manufacturer, but because you need strong arms to push it. Some of San Francisco's famous cable cars are turned manually on very small turntables at each end of the line every day. For large turntables, there is usually some kind of power system. The building called a roundhouse, used to service and store railroad equipment, gets its name because it was most often built adjacent to the turntable, and thus the building was round with tracks running from the turntable into the building. The one downside of a turntable is the great cost to build and operate it. Another limitation is that a turntable can only handle locomotives or other equipment that is as long as the turntable. Another way to turn a locomotive or even an entire train is to use a special layout of track called a balloon track. This is a much simpler method, but the balloon track has its downside. It takes up a fair bit of area. This is an example of a balloon track at the Western Pacific Railway Museum in Northern California. The balloon is easy to use as you just run the train around the track and come out going the other way. This method is still used in many places. Here's another balloon track located on the Union Pacific's former Southern Pacific Line through the Sierra Nevada Mountains at a place called Folda near Emigrant Gap, California. This balloon track was built to turn snow removal equipment and helper locomotives. It was much faster to turn such equipment by running it through the balloon track than by the laborious process of using a turntable. While a turntable takes up much less space, it can only turn one piece of equipment at a time, while a balloon track can be used to turn multiple locomotives, a set of snow removal equipment, or even an entire train. 
a balloon track is also not restricted to vehicles of a maximum length the way a turntable is. Another way is to use a turning Y. The Y needs almost as much space as a balloon track, but has the advantage of being able to be fitted into different shaped areas. Depending on how much track you have available on the tail of the Y, you can turn an entire train this way. This Y is at Fernley, Nevada, east of Reno on the Nevada subdivision of the Union Pacific's former Southern Pacific Line. At one time, this was the eastern end of the Fernley and Lassen Railroad, a line built by the Southern Pacific to transport lumber products out of Northern California from Westwood and Susanville. It also was the connection to the Modoc route that ran to Alturas, California and Klamath Falls, Oregon. While both of these lines are now abandoned, this Y connection at Fernley still serves a large cement plant and is routinely used to turn railroad equipment as it is the only place where you can turn equipment between Sparks and Winnemucca, Nevada. Its heritage remains as crews switching the plant sometimes call this short piece of track the Modoc Main. Amtrak passenger trains in some places must be wide every day due to the layout of the station. Now let's look at the last way to turn a locomotive or other equipment around. Simple. Use a uh, giant hand action. No, I'm not really kidding. While this is probably the least used technique for turning equipment, it is certainly one of the most spectacular. We have seen where a group at a rail fair at the California State Railroad Museum in Sacramento were using a very large crane to pick up a locomotive and turn it around. It, not this crane, but one very much like it. For small equipment, mostly things like speeders, the main way for turning the equipment is to have people pick it up, or at least pick up one side of it, thus turning it around. And now that the train is pointed the way we want, until next time, as always, we'll see you on the train whichever way it is pointed. <laughs>